Hey guys, how's it going? So today I thought it would be fun to plant a few things out in the garden that I started from seed. So uh, several of the things that I started in our winter sewing project and then also a few things that I started inside in the studio and have since moved them out here to the cold frame to harden off. Most of the things in our winter sewing project are big enough and I think strong enough to go outside. Uh, two of these water jugs I'm gonna leave in here for a little while, like I've got two itty bitty columbine in here. Those need to grow up a little bit. And then my buried treasure strawberries, I'm gonna leave in here as well. I had fairly poor germination with these. So I combined them into one water jug. When I took this one out of its water jug, its root system is like half of this container. Like it is a massive compared to the size of plant. So I think we're gonna have some pretty strong plants, which is exciting. But I've got some really neat things in here. There are some larkspur, artichokes, poppies, pincushion flowers, and I'll go over everything as we get them out in the garden. And then over here, I've got two flats of delphiniums. These are, can't remember what kind they are, Magic Fountains mix, I think. But I started these from seed and then potted them up in larger containers and brought them out here to get a little bit of size, but I think they are ready to roll. And then there's Russell, but I've also got my herbs. So I actually started these from seed before Samantha was born. Can you believe that? These are all perennial herbs. We've got some thyme here, which looks amazing. I cannot believe that these come from such a tiny little seed. Then we've got a few Greek oregano, two sage. One of them looks a little bit sad, but I think it'll be happy once it gets out into the landscape. This one looks good. And then three lemon balm. I also might plant these green globe artichokes out. So these are the ones I've started from seed inside. And then I've got three in a water jug that we started out here for winter sowing. They all look pretty good. And then depending on how everything goes, these are all fairly small. So I think it'll be pretty quick. I bought myself an olive tree. Mm, I'm so excited. And I think I wanna get this potted, if we have time today. I haven't really done a lot of research on these. Um, they do not grow natively here. We get Russian olive trees, but not like actual bearing olives. And I'm just gonna show you the tag here because I am not certain how to pronounce that, but that is the variety right there. I think it is a self-fertile type. Let's look. Yep, fast-growing semi-evergreen tree develops a broad, dense canopy, self-fertile. Olives are good for fruit or oil, drought tolerant in zone eight through 10. So this is gonna be one that will live in the Hartley greenhouse over the winter. So excited. Just checking it all out, Russell. So I think we should start with some of these water jugs first. Let's get them loaded up. And the best part about today is that it's in the 50s and overcast and we're supposed to get a good amount of rain tonight. Which as you know, if you've been watching, that's a rare thing around here. So this is the first area I think we'll plant because I've got some space in here, maybe for echinacea and larkspur. And then I've got quite a bit of open space right in here where I could tuck some things. There are the chickens. Hey girls. I just tossed some mule uh, worms in there. They're loving it. And real quick, look at the containers. Do you remember when I trimmed these topiaries? They're looking really good. And then the Swiss chard was just itty bitty out of a four pack when I planted them in here. They're looking very lush and full and beautiful. Aren't they a beautiful filler plant in a container? I love them. They've got such a gorgeous colored rib. These are the bright lights variety. So of course they've got different colors like the yellow and there's red and orange and really beautiful, surrounded by pansies. And we've transplanted the lavender sweet romance from in front of the gazebo. They are all coming back. One of you guys asked, cause you remembered I had planted Nepeta here. This had not broken dormancy when I planted this. I didn't notice it sitting here. And of course they can't be this close together. So I think I'm gonna move that one maybe over here at some point, probably should do that soon. That's just starting to bloom. We'll see. I think we'll start with the echinacea first. They get quite tall, so maybe like right in here. And real quick before I take these out, I planted these differently than I have before. Typically when you winter sow, you just kind of sow thickly, but then they become such a huge kind of mess in the container that I only sowed my seeds in the four corners and then one in the center so that they were easier to take apart. So I'll just take my trowel and kind of cut one of these out. You can see the root system down here. And that came out beautifully. Beautiful little transplant right there. It's the second one. This is actually two plants right here. I could separate them, I suppose. 
gently. So in this area, I planted three, no, four different varieties of things. We've got the fancy pink with white bee larkspur kind of back in here. They're the tallest of everything. And they can fill in around the Zephyrin Rose and the Buddleia. And then I've got a chocolate Baptisia right here that kind of fills in, but then we've got the Echinacea. Then we've got the amazing gray poppies. And then right in front of this birch tree in back of the lavender, we have Prairie Sun Rudbeckia. I think that should be really nice. Now I'm kind of thinking I should put a artichoke right here. I think that would be a really cool texture there. Let's do it. Okay, so artichoke there, and then I ended up putting the five Black Beauty pincushion flowers right there. So we just filled up the front part of this flower bed for pennies and very little effort. Winter sowing is really nice that way in that you kind of just plant them and you kind of forget about them. I mean, I watered mine a few times and if I would have paid more attention, they may have been even nicer than they, than they ended up, but I'm really happy with this and it's gonna be so fun to watch this thing fill in. There's already a drip system here. I used Biotone starter fertilizer when I put them in the ground, so we should be good to go. So I think I can pop several of these in this bed here. I'm thinking the Misty Lavender Larkspur could go in kind of um, on the house, like the coop side, not the run side of the rose. And then the bread seed rattle poppies can go in right behind these peachy keen, uh, I think they're peachy cream or peachy keen, I can't remember, um, landscape roses. And then possibly maybe like some cherry brandy Rebeccaia in there. I don't know, it's so fun. I've got Going Bananas Daylilies, some more Sweet Romance Lavender right here, which is not taking as well as the other one. One is taking and the other two, I'm gonna have to probably pop new ones in. It's because I didn't water them, that was my fault. Indiglo Girl Salvia right here, and then of course our Weeping Colorado Blue and our Zephyrin Rose right there, so Misty Lavender Larkspur. Let's grab the poppies right here. And maybe for fun, another couple artichokes. This side I have the one artichoke here, which will fill in this space and be beautiful. And then I've got kind of a ring of rattle poppies. So there is one right back here. And then four more, one, two, three, four. And then a misty lavender larkspur back in here. And then also kind of in this area here, another artichoke to fill in this space. And then there were three Sahara Rudbeckias right there. And I left the front part open because I do like to fill in with annuals right here because they've got so much color. I think that's awesome. We're almost done with these, dang. I just decided to tuck the crane ornamental kale into this little corner here because it gets a little bit of sun through the front here, but it's protected from a lot of it from that. And it's on the north side of this building. And honestly, the kale at this point, it's gonna start getting so hot that I'm not even sure how they're gonna perform. So I don't know, this one's kind of a 
toss up. We'll see what happens. If they do perform, they're gonna look gorgeous tucked in behind this little lime hydrangea because they come up fairly tall and they look like bouquets. They're amazing. Swinging around the back side of the chicken run, I just have to show you this crab apple. Isn't it beautiful? I cannot for the life of me remember the variety name. Is it Red Baron maybe? Gosh, I can't remember. If I remember, I'll put the name on the screen, but it's one that doesn't get very big. Like it has a eight to 10 foot spread in the end, but it's just beautiful. You know what? I think we could do some of the white pincushion flowers right in here. I think that would be beautiful. So we've got the Snow Maiden pincushion flowers, Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia, and then around the corner here, right here, we've got the Fama White pincushion flowers. I think it'll be really fun to see how all of these develop in this one space. I got them all to fit around the chicken coop area. So now I'm gonna go grab the delphiniums and the herbs and we're gonna go find spots for those. Also, I think we should take just a moment to appreciate this red bud. It's an eastern redbud, multi-trunk, absolutely beautiful. It's in its full glory right now, and the bench just got a paint job yesterday. That's why it's sitting out in the grass. Oh, so beautiful. So I've got 24 delphiniums here. I'm going to group them all right in this area here. I had this whole section planted with annuals last year and it was very pretty, but I would like to plant something that maybe comes back. We've got a smoke bush there. There are five roses called Mary Rose uh, that are pink and then some brownie tulips. And um, we are having the gazebo removed here in a couple weeks. It's going to one of our parks in the city and we're gonna start excavation for the Hartley greenhouse. So here's my hope that by sometime mid summer, mid to late summer, when the delphiniums are blooming for their second time, we'll be able to look at this view right here with the tops of the delphinium flowers and the top of the Harley right there. And I can't even believe that I can say those words. It still doesn't even feel real. And I don't think it'll feel real even when it's first put up. I think it's gonna take a while. And I'm actually hopeful that we can save some of these flower beds because you know we don't need to get machinery right here. There's a huge opening over on this grass section. So I'm hoping to save from the walkway back and from about the boxwood back. And while the area will probably see some retooling, um, I'll still have time, I'll have time to move the plants around as I need to. And if I can just fill in with little perennials instead of big trees and things like that, I think we are gonna be just fine. I did bring the auger out for this one because I can zip 24 holes into the ground very, very quickly. And this area has not been mulched clearly, so it doesn't matter if I make a mess. Here we go. that a second and they will fill in and be absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to see what they look like here. Ugh. So then we'll fill in the rest of the area with some shorter perennials or annuals and then we'll get it all mulched. It'll be so nice. And all I've got left here are some herbs which I was kind of considering planting them in containers instead of in the ground. I think I'm gonna wait on the herbs. I'm gonna try to decide if I want to do a container herb garden this year or if I want to tuck those into flower beds. I'm just not sure. I'm also going to wait on the artichokes because I was double checking the um, forecast and it looks like we have a night in the 30s, which I mean, they should be okay to be out there, 
Uh, but I'm just, I'm gonna wait because I have kind of jumped the gun on so many things out there because I wanna plant all 24 of those in a big row in the uh, cut flower garden because I think that will be stunning. Just the architecture of the plants will be stunning. Um, but I don't really wanna throw them out there knowing we're gonna have such a chilly night. Uh, so I think the last thing I'm gonna do today is just get that olive tree potted. So here's what we're gonna do. See this gorgeous container and the most lame display of fritillaria ever. So I'm gonna pull those out. They were just planted in here this last fall in fresh soil. We used this kind right here, the organic potting mix. And we used bulb tone in there and everything. So it's pretty fresh. Like this plant has not taxed the soil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plant it straight in there. And I do think that the scale of this tree and the size of this pot will be perfect. We'll find out. starting to get windy you guys. I really love how this turned out. Really, really love it. I'm gonna leave it right here for a little while until we have consistently warm nighttime temperatures. That one night in the 30s just kind of freaks me out a little bit. Looks like I've broken stem right there. Oh, there it is. But check this out. Isn't that exciting? And they're all over in this tree. And I did pot the fertile areas up. They will go somewhere out on the landscape. I don't know a ton about how to take care of olive trees um, because I've never had one for a full growing season. I've taken care of them down at the garden center, but that's different because they're in and out the door so quickly that we have them for such a short amount of time. You don't get really a full year of experience. And I feel like you need to experience a plant at least all four seasons to kind of really gain a well-rounded knowledge about the plant, I guess, and even better if you can have it for multiple seasons. But I do know that olive trees are fairly drought tolerant once they're established. So if I decide to underplant it, I'll be doing that with like lemon coral sedum, things that can handle um, less water. But I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section if you have any tips for me on this tree and what I should be doing with it. I'm just so very excited to have one. I mean, I would love to have two to like flank an opening in the Hartley, uh, especially during the winter time, but I'm wondering if I shouldn't wait to make the investment until I figure out how well I do with this one. So I think that's gonna be it for today's project. We are starting to get more wind. We're supposed to get rain tonight, but that usually means we're gonna get lots of wind. Um, and hardly ever do we get a really deep saturating rain. So in order to protect our plants from all the wind, I need to go get them all watered so that I know that they're all gonna be fine. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Super excited to show you updates especially around the chicken coop throughout the season with all those seedlings in. I hope the wind doesn't get too bad for them. It should be all right. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.